Hey, it's Brett out uh, again. It is time for Backyard Nature. Uh, the calendar says August. And with that, we often see a lot of changes. Of course, fall is coming. The animals are getting ready. Birds are leaving. Uh, some of the animals are staying or eating, fattening and up. One of the things I think a lot of people are used to seeing come August are, it, it, let's just call it an emergence of bees. And the, the term bee kind of is a catch-all for every little yellow and black stinging insect. In particular, it's the yellow jackets. It's the paper wasps. Um, we start to see them more and more as August winds down. Um, just the other day, I was out in my yard doing some uh, landscaping work, happened to find a yellow jacket nest. You probably all, or some of you have been in this situation. It's not super duper exciting. Usually you don't know it's there until you stepped on it, but then they were everywhere. I made several attempts uh, to rid them of it, and I'm gonna show you actually the leftovers of the nest in a moment. So here are the remains of a yellow jacket nest that I found last week. I dug it up, took care of it. I did actually spray it. I didn't really want to use the poison on there, but after a couple of attempts just to disrupt it and tear it all to pieces, they weren't really going anywhere. Uh, you can see all of the hexagon structures in here. Those are all individual cells. Um, it's not just the honeybees that make this for making honey. Um, and actually you can see old larvae that are in there. The stuff that is capped, that has a top to it, the white, those are brood that have been capped off no longer a larva, but are now in the pupa stage. So it isn't just the honeybees that do this neat kind of honeycomb structure. It is the bees and wasps, really all of them, uh, mostly using it for their young. So there was the nest. Um, you can tell really not a whole lot left. Um, as August winds down, and this is bees and hornets and wasp nests in general, the queen, the one bee in there that runs everything, she leaves. She often heads off to find a winter place to stay. It might be underneath a log. It might be underneath kind of the bark of a tree, um, but she's gone. When she leaves, the person that's telling the other bees or the other wasps what to do is gone. That means they're on their own. They leave the hive. Uh, they go off in search of their own food. They really don't know what to do, and they often find themselves getting into trouble. Uh, the reason we see them around all of our sugary food is that th most of these, the wasps and the hornets, are carnivores. They eat other insects throughout the entire summer until now. They switch over. They go to a sugar-based diet. Some of that's nectar from the flowers, and others is that sweet stuff you've got in your can or the food on your plate out at the picnics. Um, really, until we get that first hard frost, the bees will be a nuisance throughout mid-August till the end. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes out for them. Be careful. Watch what you're doing around them. Uh, when they sting, this is one of the last things that's really wild. When a bee or a wasp stings you, it gives off a pheromone, is a scent that the other bees, that's an alarm, a danger scent. And that's why often people get stung, they get stung again or again and again. And honeybees are the only ones with the stinger that actually has barbs on it that get stung when they try to leave, get stuck, and their abdomen tears in half. The others can sting you as many times as they want. Enjoy as summer winds down, as fall slowly creeps its way into the picture. We'll catch you next time when we look for the nature in your backyard.